In this video I will show you how to export 3D objects from your code to an STL file. I'll cover how to create a method which you can call anytime and will automatically give you an STL file in an ASCII format. For this I will use Python 3 and the IDE is PyCharm and I think that's all you need to know. Now let's cover some important stuff before. The file structure for an STL file is fairly easy to understand, this is an example of what it would look like. So the very first thing is that you need to start and end the file with the words solid and end solid respectively. This is a must. I have highlighted them in green. You might have already noticed that these three sections here repeat. Each one of these bread boxes are one single facet from our 3D object. In the first line next to the word solid you can see that it says uh, acleave.stl. Well this is a comment and it is optional. Here you can write whatever you think will be important, makes no difference, but keep it to that line and separate from the word solid by uh, single space. Here you will list the information for the normal vector components for that facet and also the coordinates of the vertices. Since we are dealing with triangles then it's going to be three vertices. So write the facet normal, list the values, then outer loop in the next three lines, write vertex and list the vertices. And to close the facet, write end loop and lastly end facet. And then you just go ahead and do the same for the next facet. There is a certain convention for the SEL files. So let's get this sphere as an example. You can see the grid and how it is composed of triangles. Let's extract a portion of this grid right here. Notice that between two rows and two columns you have a, a box. Let's take that box out. We have two facets or triangles and four vertices per box. Let's index them, i for your rows and j for columns. And let's name facet A and facet B. Facet A is made by connecting the following points. So let's make a note of that somewhere. We can do the same for triangle B or well, facet B. And this is pretty much it. Then you move horizontally to the adjacent box until you reach the last one. And then you move one row down until you've covered the whole grid. In programming terms, we will have two for loops. Main for loop will be for rows and the nested one will be for columns and we will write the two facets of each box per loop. Now you can see where we have written the indexes for each triangle that they are in certain order. That is done on purpose because we're following a counterclockwise uh, direction and that is because that will ensure that the normal of that facet is pointing outwards and we will get to that when we get to it but for now just remember that. And all of this let's go to Python. I wanted this code to be library independent but to be honest it's not worth the hassle. So import numpy as mp and also these two matplot libraries, don't worry about them, they are there just to show you the 3D object, we will delete them later. I assume you know how to import libraries and how to ins install them, uh, because I am not the correct person to explain that, uh, I will just confuse you further. Alright, so the objective is to turn a 3D object into an STL file, right? So you should already have an object. I will get mine from this library containing several methods that will give me the obje objects I want. And for this video I want a cone. Done. Here are my X, Y, and Z matrices containing the coordinates of the cone. And with these magical plotting commands, I will show you how it, it, it will look like. Well, it really isn't a cone. It is a actual name escaping my mind right now. But anyway, uh, let's delete this and the matplotlib libraries. Let's go ahead and define some variables that we will need later on. First, let's give the output file a name. And the name has to end with the extension .stl. Otherwise, our computer won't know that it is an STL file. Next, let's get the number of rows and columns we have in our object. And we do that by using the shape function or method or attribute or whatever. I'm not a computer scientist. The first item will be index 0 and we'll give me the first dimension. So in this case, rows. And second item or index 1 is going to give me the columns. Here, if you want, you can open an integral variable just to count the number of facets your geometry has. Just for your information, this is not uh, necessary. Lastly, let's prepare that document where we will write everything into. So let's create an object for that file is equal to open the name we gave our file in W because we will write into the file. If the file exists, it will overwrite the information on it. If it doesn't exist, then it will create a new one. We can take the first step by writing that solid word in the first line. So f dot write parenthesis solid and backslash n. This will tell Python to go to the next line in the file. So at this point, if you go ahead and run the, your code, it will, you will notice that in your directory, it will create a new file with the name of whatever you gave uh, to file name, and it will have the word solid on it. Now moving on to the main loop, open two for loops. One is going to loop uh, row by row, and we'll go from zero to the number of rows we calculated minus one. The nested loop will go column by column and is going to count from 0 to the number of columns minus 1. Now let's tackle triangle A first. Remember that we have two triangles 
per box and the box just means uh, one for loop. So I'm going to call the points that make uh, the triangle A, which I'm going to call them P1, P2 and P3. And here we will create an array and we will use MP dot as array. So the variable type is that of array instead of list. This way we can perform mathematical operations with them. Inside the brackets, we will list the indices of the three vertices, just like we listed them earlier on. So for face A, you should have something like this. From these three points, we can calculate the normal vector of the facet, and that is done by obtaining two vectors tangent to that facet plane, and then obtaining the vector that is normal to them. I am going to simplify things a bit here and create a method up here called unit vector which as arguments will take the open file, p1, p2, and p3. We will call this method every time we want to calculate the normal. Let's get two vectors by subtracting first p1 with p2 and then p1 with p3. Since these points are vertices of the facet, it is guaranteed that these vectors will be tangent. The normal vector between two other vectors can be done by resolving the cross product, so np.cross, and inside the parentheses vector1 and vector2. So if you want to get rid of that NumPy library and make your code library independent, you need to create a method that calculates the cross product of two vectors and also the vectors are going to be in list form because we're not going to have that as array function from NumPy. So yeah, you have to deal with that. That's why I didn't want to do it. I don't know if the next part is necessary, but I like to have the unit normal rather than just the normal vector. And that is done by dividing the normal vector by its magnitude. And the magnitude is calculated by uh, using the Pythagoras formula, the sum of all components the square and then take the square root of that finally the unit normal vector will be normal to the vector divided by the magnitude right and right here is where we actually save space because we have to write all this information plus the vertices on the file and we have to do that twice per loop so we will do be doing that a lot of times so we can actually incorporate the writing part of the code into this method we are going to do two things at once calculate the normal and then write everything into the file so after calculating the normal we have all the information we need to write one face it down in the file the first line was the face it normal followed by the three components in this case our face it normal is the unit vector Next, the term outer loop by itself. Remember the backlash in to jump to the next line. Now let's write vertex three times and let's list the terms for P1, P2 and P3 in each of them. Lastly, write end loop and end face it. It is very important that you don't forget that backlash n here. It is not going to work if you do. Now just write return and that is it. We have triangle A done. I promise triangle B will be way easier. Let's go back to the main loop and call that method we just created, unit vector. It will take the file and all three points. When this method runs, it will automatically calculate the normal of the points given and write that to the file. Triangle B is done this exact same way. We rewrite P1, P2 and P3 with the indices for triangle B this time. Once we have the three points, all that is left is to call that method we just created again. It will calculate the respective normal vector and write it to the file. And to close the loop off, we will count how many faces we have. So number of facets plus two each loop. Remember that we have two triangles here. Each triangle is one facet. Now, once the loop is over and all the facets have been written, remember we have to end the file with the worth or well term in solid. So file dot write parentheses and solid. And lastly, file dot close to close the file, I guess. We can go ahead and print the number of faces just to see if everything works. And let's run this. On your directory, a new file might have been created and you open it with a 3D viewer or Paraview or any STL reader. Well, there it is. Looks all right to me. In order for this to be actually useful, we are going to package it into a method that you can call at any time. For that, you create another .py file. I have mine here. It is called utilities. You'll see that I already have two other methods. Well, here is where I save all the stuff that I make for the videos. So let's open a new one and create a new category called 3D file formats. And the method will be called something like, let's say, export STL. The arguments will be the X, Y, and Z matrices of our 3D geometry and the file name. Don't forget to add the colon. Now let's go back to the file we were working on before and copy the whole code after where you wrote the file name. Go back and paste it inside the method and that is pretty much it. Oh yeah, remember this needs NumPy, so at the top you need to import that library, which as you can see I have already done. Go back to the main file and delete all we did. Just keep the geometry and the file name. Also delete the libraries since it is being imported in the other file. We don't need it here. Now let's make a proper cone this time. Call the function, give the arguments and run it. 
Nice, it works. So I hope you learned something with this video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, especially if you find errors in the code. All right, bye.